and welcome to my channel today i'm again joined by my lovely sister sigil if this is one of the first times that you are watching one of my videos please hit the subscribe button which is actually a watermark on one of the sides, sides. Um, as well as hit the bell notification to make sure that my videos do pop up in your subscription box today's video is something that i don't know if anyone's actually done it before but indians believe a lot in superstitions <laughs> And I'm sure many other countries do as well. And so I thought, why not make a whole video about superstition? So if you're not following me on Instagram, please do. Because that's where I asked lots of people to give superstitions that they've grown up with or that they believe in or that they think are funny. And that's what I'm going to be using to answer these questions, questions slash superstitions. So for the first superstition i'm just using my sister's phone because i'm filming on my phone for this first superstition okay. we got actually quite a lot if i can show you like we got a whole lot there you go just let it focus. Um, okay so the first one that i'm going to do is from the indian community it's quite a lot we know um, a lot of people from around the world so it's not only our superstitions yes. in our culture it's all around the world yeah. so it's very diverse we have superstitions obviously being indian from indians um then we have superstitions coming up from brazil then we ireland. have some from ireland because one of my really close friends is has his friends is has his friends is has his friends is has her mom is irish sorry and then i also have a lot from other people so one of the first ones, which is a common, common one that we got, is to tie your hair up at night or the spirits will get you. Slash seven sisters. Yes. So you. the story what my grandmother had actually told me is that there was these seven sisters, as Sigil said, and basically, I don't know if they died on a tree or something like that. But basically, they like stay in the tree branches, and if you walk um, at night with your hair opened under a tree, um, they will come and like get in your hair and give you like bad dreams or bad thoughts. So when we were younger, our granny, especially my mom's mom, um, would make sure that we are have our hair tied up, but not just like a bun, like a, a, a fish, fish plant. plant, right? And if it wasn't in a plat with my dad's mom, she'd scold us before leaving and make sure, like, that we had it tied. Because time. apparently, you know, the plat, there's three folds. So it makes it the strongest hairstyle for the seven sisters not, not to come, to come into. To you. So that one was a common one. I think I got about eight or nine of that. So I was really happy to see that we aren't the only ones at that. But yeah, that was the first. The second one is to not sleep with your cupboards <laughs> opened at night. And I'm pretty sure that I heard this somewhere because if you ask Sigel, I hate going to bed with my cupboards open. Like even if it's not just mine, like say Sigel's... And they are slightly open because of their hinges, they're quite old. <laughs> but she like literally makes me like slowly push it and make and sure it goes. And release it. Because I'm so scared that something's like going to come out. And I'm so sure that the whole superstition leading to that comes with why people are afraid to sleep with like their cupboards open but it's not even like mine if my mom's room or my sister's room's um cupboards are open i will get up and like go and close them at like 12 at night to make sure that it's like that before i close my eyes that's how I don't superstitious think, yeah I don't, I, I don't think it's a superstition because i seriously think i'm just scared of sleeping I'm not really superstitious so. i think it's kind of like i don't like anything being open like it's not even just cupboards like i don't like doors to be um left closed sorry i like them to be open but with cupboards i like them to be closed with my like desk drawer my chairs everything must be like in or like closed I, I don't know where that comes from but maybe it's because i heard the superstition when right. i was younger. is to touch your hair or like pull a strand of your hair when you um pass a cemetery or a, ce a funeral home or when you see a hearse on the road and it's just like respect and along with this i don't know if anyone said this but to also not keep your feet on the ground 
and you have to pull your hair. So, so literally, we'll be, in, we'll be in the car like this. And like we'll be pulling our hair until we like the hearse isn't in our sight anymore or um, the cemetery's gone. And it's a very big thing. Like as soon as we used to pass when we were younger, it would be like, feet up, hair pull. And it was like, if you didn't do that, it's like, what's wrong with you? So in a car, if there was like seven of us, we'd have to find place to do that. Funny story. Yeah. I actually did not know what a cemetery was. So I used to think it was the bus stop signs. And there was one right outside my school when I lived in Cape Town. And literally, I would walk around like this the whole day. And people would ask me, are you okay? And then I was like, people are making fun of me because I keep on holding my hair. And she's like, why are you holding it? It's like, because you know, the cemetery sign is there. <laughs> and she's like, what does it look like? I just said there's like a bus on it and it's blue. And she's like, that's not a cemetery. That's I don't a know bus where sign. she got that from because it doesn't even have the word bus. In it. I don't know where she thought cemetery and bus meant the same because thing. Because the one time we went past a cemetery and I didn't know what it was. And I just thought there was a bus sign right there. So I was like... <laughs> That's what I thought. This poor child at like five years old was he pulling her hair and going around and eating her food. <laughs> Another okay. one. All my Indian and South Asian sisters and brothers out there, you are going to relate to this like no other. And that is turning salt for ice. <laughs> so it's not actually funny because it does actually work. work. But it's just, it's like how it's a such a common thing that it kind of is funny. So basically, the thing is that, um, say for instance, if I was in uh, a drama show or Sajil had her art on display or it's our birthday, right? And a lot of people are like wishing us and stuff like that. Um, a lot of good wishes come your way. Then sometimes it's not always um, with good intentions or like if it's envy for instance to say Sajil like really succeeded at like becoming this huge superstar and then people like will obviously be proud of her but then they'll be like oh I wish I was like Sajil or whatever that's like putting eyes on you and so what you do is um that night or whatever you usually get the oldest female in your house which is usually our grannies they usually do it for us but obviously they're not with us because um we live in different we live in, provinces. Yeah, and my one granny, as I've said previously, passed away. My mom now does it does it for us uh, almost every month, at least once. And then you turn salt and you do a prayer and you do it three times there's clockwise. more than just salt in your hand. It's yeah, there's, just... like, there's like salt and there's mustard seeds and other things, but we just say turn salt. And so, yeah, you turn the salt and do a whole ritual. You, you do a, like a prayer going spit into the soul and then yeah that you go like and then they break your knuckles on the floor with that salt in their hand and the more knuckles that break it's the more um eyes are being released eyes are being released from the person so that's how it works some people also do it like with the coconut and hair and then salt and then they burn it and like leave it out but that's a whole different thing but turning salt is a very big thing in the indian community and the final one for um, Indian people is, oh, if you, <laughs> uh, if you um, whistle at night, <laughs> you'll either dream of snakes or the snakes will come for you. And if you laugh a lot in the night, that's what will happen. We've grown <laughs> up with this because my sister and I, I swear when we are together, I swear we could have our own comedy show. So when we laugh at night or uh we i don't know yeah when we laugh a lot at night or when we okay i can't whistle if you did not know <laughs> I, yeah. i've tried in my entire nearly 20 years of existence i cannot whistle but if she whistled at night our parents <laughs> shout us and they're like no you can't do that because the snakes are gonna come when snakes are gonna come in johannesburg <laughs> in our complex i don't know but yeah they're that's... gonna come through your toilets <laughs> um then the last one for the Indian one, I know I said that before, but here's another one, is if you steal from the pot, you'll <laughs> you'll have rain on your wedding day. And when I saw, this is from one of my um, aunties. Auntie Lowe. Yeah, aunties, <laughs> but she's not really my aunt, she's like really close to my age. Just like she's an older sister, you can say, but... Um, when she said this, I was like, well, I guess I'm going to have rain on my wedding day. Because our side, like, especially when we have Briani, you guys know, Briani is like one of my favorite foods. 
and potatoes. So my mom like fries the potatoes to put in the biryani. I always like have two or three from the pot. So I guess I'm gonna have rain on my wedding day. I just go and have it inside or have a marquee. I think that's what's gonna happen. You wanna add anything, Sat? I ate everything from the pot. Yeah, we eat. Wait. We always eat from the pot. <laughs> and and like the one thing is that in our religion, we believe that when kids ask for food from the pot, you should always give them because it's like um, God would want you to give the child the food. It's like God asking for an offering. So I don't know how this two kind of mash up. But yeah, that's all for the Indian part. Now let's go over to the Brazil. <laughs> so like he gave quite a lot that is known around the world. Like if a black cat like crosses your path and walking under a ladder. But the funniest one that I saw of his, not actually funny if it is true. But it's if you leave your, your flip-flops upside down, your mother will pass away. I have never, never heard, heard that. that. First, that's the first thing. Second of all. I have never heard of anyone leaving their flip flops like upside oh, okay, down. Okay, yeah, I understand that. Like, if you go to the beach and you don't want it to get like so hot when you're going on the sand, you turn it upside down so like the insides oh, don't burn your feet. Okay, but yeah, it's just I don't know. Like that was just a very strange one that I got, but also really funny. Um, and oh, one that I think is known across the world, but it just happened to be in his thing is that playing with. Oh, I just say the playing with fire. It's you must knock on wood three, three times. times. Um, if you say something that you don't want to happen. So if I want to say like, oh, I'm gonna be poor for the rest of my life, then knock on the thing three times. You know. But wait, I was just gonna say that. Yes, I know. So a running joke that we have in our whole family is that when we say knock on wood, we knock on each other's head. Just as a running joke that you have no brains. But yeah, (laughs) that's a very big thing. Like you find the closest wooden thing next to you and you knock on it three times to make sure that that never happens. And then another one that I got quite a lot is that if you make funny faces all the time, um, there will be like an invisible angel or an invisible um, spirit that will come and freeze your face like that forever. And I actually heard of this for something because one of my best friend sisters, she used to always like cross her eyes and like make them go there and it used to get dark. And so my best friend would tell her it's because an angel walked past you and your face got mm-hmm. stuck. <laughs> but yeah. And then something that I really, really think happened to you think happened to me (laughs) you don't know because obviously on a video you can't tell how tall i am i am like four foot nine and a half nearly five foot and my family is quite short especially my mom's uh, my mom and my mom's sisters and my both my grannies they are extremely short and my sister is too um but basically the superstition is if you jump uh yeah you can't jump over someone or they'll never grow. You have to like walk back. Yeah. And, and undo, undo it. it. So I had a friend that used to do this all the time. Like she was dead set that this is how um, <clears throat> she will get short whatever. So if I mistakenly like crossed her legs or something. She'd be like here I go back. And like and like go back and walk back. And like undo it. Even if you're did. on the bed. And like there's no other way to go. And the only way is that she'll be like. You better walk over and find another way. <laughs> yeah. So I'm pretty sure that's somehow, happened to you i'm pretty sure somehow that happened because being 20 and four foot nine is like there's no room for me to ever grow i'm gonna stay the size forever which i have no problem with because i love being short i mean i get like 12 kids under free yeah i get into place for free because i don't believe i'm 20 i also get like tiny clothes i don't have to pay as much as for things as other people there's always thinking but i think this is a very good explanation and we it. are five years apart but we like literally like just that much yeah i'm high difference short. So, if by chance I grow up, and it also doesn't make sense because dancers usually have their spine stretched, and I've been dancing since the age of two. So I definitely think that this superstition somehow happened to me when I was younger, and that's why I'm stuck at this. And now one of my friends, as I said before, her oh yeah, I have two friends that are like of the UK Kingdom, like their family. UK Kingdom. I mean, United (laughs) Kingdom, not UK Kingdom. Um, but it is, um, if you drop your, like a knife and you pick it up yourself, you won't have love 
for the next seven years of your life. Let's just say she doesn't work in the kitchen, so no one picks up the. <laughs> That's not fair. I sometimes do work in the kitchen, but I picked up knives off the floor myself many times. And I'm pretty sure that's why in my 20 years of existence, I've been single my entire life. She always so, says I have a bigger love life than she does. She does. She gets people to talk to and I'm just like... <laughs> okay, um, well... I have two things about knocking, right? Knocking, whatever. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if you bump heads with someone, you have to bump heads with them again. And I had friends in high school and my, one of my closest friends now that really does believe in like, if we bump heads, she'll go like, to make sure that like we get rid of it or whatever and make sure that like we don't have bad luck that comes with it and the second one is if you hit your elbow on like a desk or something which happens often because i'm we are clumsy short. that oh. too <laughs> um then you have to knock it again and my friend the same friend would always say like here you need to bump oh. it again otherwise one of the ones that i actually wanted to say is that if you like for instance give someone food in a container or you give them a purse you can never give it back or give them the purse empty. So if I'm gifting Sigel like a handbag or something, I have to give like some money inside. Otherwise, I will lose money. And if I um, give some Sigel food and then she returns to the container, she has to put like chocolate or something inside and not return it empty. I always because... return it empty. Like... Okay, well, we live in the same house, Sai. But, like, other okay, people yeah, do it because then you'll lose food or, like, you won't have enough food or something like that. And so everyone does that. Our grannies, especially, whenever they used to give us, like, coin purses and stuff, they'd always, like, put a few cents in or a hundred grand if we hit the jackpot. But For all the foot massages we've done over <laughs> one the of year. the last ones is that um, dreaming of teeth means you're going to hear of a death. That I've heard of a lot. Sigel actually had a dream the other day where, like... Uh, I think it's better. Oh, wait, no, no, tell, tell I tell you the trauma I went through. I had a dream, like, my one... my One! Let me just make sure you know. One tooth. I think it was, like, my canine or something like that. On the bottom and the top. They were just, like, shaky. Like, it was either the bottom or the top. They were just... One was just shaky. And so, like, it was, like, shaky enough to, like, pull it out yourself. So then, like, I pulled it out. This is a like, dream. It, I don't know if she said it was a dream. It wasn't like like fully out. Like I thought like, hey, I can't put my tooth there, but it's not like allowing me to pull it out. And then like you just hear the sound of like, you know, like when you crack like a glass or like bite through ice. And like my whole row of teeth went away. Like it just like stuck together. Like, you know, those she magnets it's like, like a line. Yeah. Ovular magnets that we had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That stick together. It literally looked like a line of that. And I was like. Freaking like out. a line, like if you take out like those Invisalign thingies, that's what she dreamt it. And I've also had some of me you know, like Invisalign. Is... No, I know, but I'm saying like how you pull it out. That's oh, how yeah. she pulled it out. So oh, yeah. that is all for today. We were gonna put a bit more, but I can see I already have like 22 minutes of footage, Video. which I'm going to have to sit and edit. But thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you found this funny or relatable in some kind of sense. Drop some more comments of some more that we can do in the next yes, video. Yes, I can make a part two if you guys say. I always say that. In any video, if you want me to make a part two, I can always please do that. Please do comment, guys. Yeah, please. please do comment. It does help to grow the channel and being a small channel. We want all the help that we can get. Um, leave ideas. Tell us what we can work on as well. Please give this a thumbs up and share with people who you think will enjoy the video and please 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 do not forget to subscribe as i've said there's like a subscribe button either here or here it's like a small <laughs> square with a k um or it's down below i also have other videos which you can go and check um that are also linked down in my description box as well as if you go into my um my whole video list you can go there but yes, I hope that you guys have a fantastic week ahead filled with lots of love, light, happiness and positivity. And thank you so much for watching again. Love you guys. Bye.